PHNX Cardinals, Cardinal Roundtable, Johnny Venerable, Bo Brock here. Bet MGM Sportsbook at the Great Lawn at State Farm Stadium. Hanging out with a couple Arizona Cardinal Pro Bowlers, Neil Rackers, kicker, Larry Centers, all do fullback. We're having a blast here. We want to talk about the state of the Arizona Cardinals ahead, Neil, of the Pittsburgh Steelers matchup. You know, you had a tough loss against the Steelers in the Super Bowl. What was it, 24, 25, 32? I can't remember what it was. But at the, listen, at the end of the day, it was a difficult one nonetheless. What do the Cardinals need to do today effectively in the kicking game to make sure they come out with a dub? You know, put the ball in the end zone and, and make all their kicks. I mean, rely on Prater. You know, inside of 60, I think he's money. So uh, in Pittsburgh, when you can do that, uh, with this, you know, Pittsburgh doesn't put up a lot of points and they don't allow a lot of points. So I think that's going to make a big difference in this game today. I hope they've got maybe a camera angle that can really hone in on, on the wide receiver's feet here in the end zone of this game. We don't want any mistakes like we've seen against this team before. You know, the, you just my kids still hate the color yellow because of the <laughs> 08 Super Bowl. I mean, I, I, I really have a hard time with that. But, uh, you know, it was nice to uh, prove. For me, it was nice to prove Chris Collinsworth wrong yeah. that we were the worst playoff team in NFL history after playing in Cincinnati. So it uh, it was nice to get there, but gosh, we were so close. And, and that hurt. <laughs> that hurt a lot. You guys had immaculate special teams that year en route to the postseason. Big kicks in games like Atlanta, Carolina, of course, Philadelphia in the NFC Championship game. I mean, do you think back to that year and you think, okay, had we gotten just one or two more possessions offensively in the Super Bowl, we're probably coming out with a championship? Or if we just trip Harrison before halftime. Yeah. I mean, that, that was the big one. That was a 10-point swing. We're kicking a 20-yard field goal. But, uh, you know, Larry came up big. Kurt came up big. And, and we were just lucky to have leaders like Larry and Kurt on, on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, I got here in 03, and the culture really changed with those two guys leading the offense. And, uh and the attitude changed and the way we work changed. So, it, uh, you know, I think that's something the Cardinals could benefit from now with Kyler back and being a leader and uh, uh, just having good leadership makes a huge difference on a ball club. So, you know, I mean, you talk about changing the culture. Larry, your team was one the first team that really changed the culture around here, especially in the desert, that 96 team. You know, you had – I'm not 96, but you had – Jake Plummer, yourself, you had Frank Sanders. 98. 98, I apologize. Getting to the playoffs, going there and winning a, winning a playoff game against Dallas, unbelievable. What was it about that team Was it, it was that sparked everything for you? That was an exciting time for us. You know, we, we came out that year. We had Vince Tobin come in, and he really changed the attitude of the team, has believing in ourselves. Jake played great for us that year. And, uh, man, just, you know, I couldn't be more happy for the fans out here in the Valley. They were so hungry for a winner back then, and we gave them a taste of it. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, we weren't able to close the deal. We went to Minnesota the yeah. following week and, and laid a big goose egg. But, you know, it was an exciting time, and I was happy to be a part of it. How do you go from a team like you had in 97, which had some struggles, to the huge jump in 1998? Because that's what the Arizona Cardinals are going to attempt to do. They're on track, we assume, for a top-five draft pick. They're going to bring back a lot of pieces, but implement some new pieces. How did you and the veterans on that team kind of lay the foundation for that big jump in 1998? Well, it's a really fine line between success and failure. You know, when you're talking about a team full of 53 guys on a roster, you have to have a few guys come in, some leaders, as Neil mentioned, some leaders that come in and, and really, you know, just create a standard mm -hmm. that uh, everybody's accountable to. And when you can do that, you know, raise the accountability level, you know, um, establish some team confidence, I think uh, that usually bodes well for your team in the long run. Yeah. You know, when I look at this Arizona Cardinals team, Neil and Larry, you know, Jonathan Gannon laid out what he wants from his players. I think if you look at, you know, players and teams from Cardinals past, not everybody would fit into this culture right now. They want those violent, adaptable, intelligent players. And I think you two actually fit that mold. Like, what do you like so far from this current Arizona Cardinals team, even though they're just 2-10? and 10, The record doesn't show you a whole lot, but there's guys out there playing multiple positions. Of course, you like to place kicking, but you were a guy that, you know, you had mentioned to me you had 16 tackles on special teams at one point. I mean, what is it about that type of player that can kind of do it all that can help a team in this state? Well, football is a flow game. You know, and, and so if I made a tackle, the defense comes on the field, they're fired up. Yeah. So I, you feed off of each other. I mean, that's that's the way this game game works. And uh, 
when you see other guys doing their job, they're hungry to do their job, and these guys feed off. If they're not, guys feed off of that as well. You know, you're kind of like, why aren't guys fired up? So um, I like what I like that Coach Gannon's doing is he's putting his system in place. You know, he's now got his quarterback that he's going to be working yeah. with, and uh, and he's sticking with that plan. Um, and also, I enjoy the fact that they're competitive. Yeah, you know, they haven't haven't won a lot of games, obviously, but but they're competitive every week. So that's that's a sign of things to come. They're not going out and you know getting blown out early in these games, and, and to where the second half the other team is not not even really trying. I mean. They're competitive in ball games, and, and that's fun to see. Well, Larry, a big key of being competitive long term is the stability of the quarterback position. They just got Kyler Murray back. Now, there's a segmented part of the fan base like, oh, maybe they should pivot, they should draft a top quarterback. But what's your opinion on Kyler Murray? Can they be a successful franchise with him under center, short term, long term? Have you seen enough to say, that's my franchise quarterback in 2023 and beyond? Well, I had the opportunity to talk to a good friend of mine, Jude LaCava. Uh, who used to be a writer yeah. here in the Valley a Legend. while back. And uh, Jude mentioned to me when he first saw Kyler, he said he has a big-time arm. Mm -hmm. If they can put him in position to make plays, and, you know, he's a different type of quarterback. He needs to be able to move the pocket and uh, create some – the running game is key, too. Yeah. They can get James Conner rolling out there, get that offensive line where they can tee off on some guys on the defensive line. I think that will help Kyler tremendously. You know, Kyler, I don't think he's they, – they've ridden him off just yet. Yeah. You know, but, uh, you know, they're, they're going to have to establish some, some consistency back there. And so far, we haven't been able to do that. But I got to agree with, with Neil in that, you know, they've uh, John Gannon has these guys really humming and being mm -hmm. competitive. You know, one thing that, that I haven't seen is I haven't seen them quit this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, even though things haven't always gone their way, they played well throughout the entirety of the ball game. So that's always a good sign. Hopefully they'll, something will happen and they'll click and get things rolling yeah. on the right track. Let me ask this question for both of you. Uh, obviously, some big moments in both of your careers wearing the white and red, but what stands out to you when you think about, think fondly about your time here in the desert? What place maybe stands out specifically to you both? I was, for me, the NFC Championship game. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, that, that you said place, well, the stadium. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, when I ran on the field uh, after a touchdown, that NFC Championship game, it was wall. I mean, I had my fingers <laughs> in my ears because – I mean, it was hard to focus, and, and it was fun to see the Valley um, that fired up. And, uh, you know, they, they deserve it. There's been a lot, a lot of fans here since, what is it, 86, um, who are hungry for it. And mm. it was just fun to give them something at home. It was more fun to do it at home in the NFC Championship game than to go to Tampa and, and, and play in the Super Bowl. I mean, it, it, it uh, just an exciting time. How about yourself, Larry? Well, uh, I'd have to go back and say the kick that we made against San Diego back in 98 that yeah. sent us to the playoffs for the first time in, I think, 15 years. Yeah. You know, and uh, just to see the excitement in the stands, as Neil mentioned, you know, these, these people have really been hungry for a winner. I think they tore the goalpost down and took it down, <laughs> down Tiffany <laughs> Avenue. So, you know, just to, that just shows you, man, just if you just put a winning product on the field, man, these, these fans here in the Valley, they're ready for it. Now, I'm going to get you out of here on a superficial question because we haven't talked about it yet. Thumbs up or thumbs down to the new uniforms? Do you guys like them this year? All right. I really like them. Yeah, they're pretty really. sweet. You know, The they, frosty whites, tough to beat. When they came out with them, they were like, did they make any changes? They were kind of hammering them. But I looked at them. They look classy to me. I, yeah. I really enjoy them. Yeah, sweet look, man. I think it's a real clean look. Now we just have to put a winning product that's match, that matches the look. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> We're here, BetMGM, having a blast here, Alumni Day. Check us out. Subscribe to PHNX Sports on YouTube. We all silly like the mayor.